In my earlier video from today, I have showed how you can test a coil, for instance such a coil, coil the white one, with a test oscillator that was here. And I also told that with a dip meter, and that's this instrument, transistor dip meter, you can test coils on their uh, resonance frequency. And that's what I want to show now. The dip meter is a very simple instrument. In fact it's an oscillator and to that oscillator we have connected a meter here with which you can see how strong uh, the oscillation is. And you can stick to the dip meter all kinds of coils. This is one of the coils. This is a coil for uh, high frequencies. And here we have some coils for lower frequencies. Stick them into the meter <coughs> and then you can test uh, a coil, an experimental coil. This is one experimental coil and I'm going to test it now with the dip meter. And of course the, the coils have to couple because <coughs> the dip meter is an oscillator, it sends out a radio signal. The radio signal is received by this coil and when these coils are in resonance we can see it on the meter. The meter has all kinds of scales. They refer to the different coils. So we are going to test now whether uh, this coil resonates on a certain frequency. I move the scale now and here we see that the <coughs> sorry that the <coughs> that the coil resonates. Uh, that is not always very clear, so that is one of the flaws from the dip meter. It is not always usable, <coughs> and especially it is not usable when you want to use coils in an electronic circuit. So it's good for testing coils uh, in a more or less free way when they are free here uh, laying on the table. But when you have coils in a reel there are always um, other uh, influences to that coil. For instance here we have the antenna. It could be an antenna from 10 meters outside. That antenna from 10 meters outside is, has a capacitive influence on the coil, an inductive influence because it's a long wire, etc. etc. So the coil is damped. And for instance when you want to receive a very sharp radio signal on say uh, 5 megahertz, the antenna must not load the coil. So uh, that it doesn't get to its proper uh, receiving resonance. And in that case you need here for instance a capacitor, a small capacitor between the 10 meter wire outside and the coil. It decouples the coil from the antenna so that the uh, antenna coil can get to its proper resonance. And also here at the output from the antenna coil we have impedance and that was in my earlier video. I have explained that already. When we have an IF filter, for instance like this one or like that one, all IF filters on 455 kilohertz, we are 
um, encountering the same problem. These filters may not be damped so that they are taken out of their resonance frequency by the input stage or the output stage. So they must be coupled loosely to the input stage and to the output stage and the best idea is to uh, connect such an IF filter to a field effect transistor, to the gate from a field effect transistor. That keeps a resonance in this IF filter sharp, properly. And that means that you can receive all the radio stations very sharp. So no radio stations are mixed. And uh, here we have again the antenna circuit. It's what I have already explained. Use for instance a small capacitor here in to the antenna 10 meter outside to keep the coil, the tuned circuit that's here, tuned to its proper frequency band. And often this is not a fixed capacitor but a variable capacitor. So, um, and in this way you can tune the, the antenna coil to all the frequencies that you want to receive. For instance between 2 and 10 MHz on shortwave. Or even higher. This is again the field effect transistor gate uh, to prevent that the tank circuit is loaded in some way. So again about the same uh, issue. I hope uh, it's somewhat clear and uh, wish you luck. Uh, the dip meter again, inner side from the dip meter. You can also make a dip meter yourself, not very uh, difficult. There are many schematics in radio amateur magazines. Coils of course have to have uh, exact properties, that's more or less a problem. But anyway, you can succeed when you have a frequency counter, etc. And again, here the old test oscillator. I've made this with a NPN transistor or PNP medium power transistor. But when you make this test oscillator with a field effect transistor, the whole circuit suffers uh, much less from parasitic capacitance and you can get more precise measurements.